What are you looking for, Leo? Good morning. <laughs> nah, that best. Good morning to you. May I look for, for myself. May I make sure some of the on live this morning. Oh, I don't see you. Oh, maybe I did, I'm doing something wrong. Oh, how oh, are you? It's me. You? Good morning, sir. And me at the principal this morning, so you're right for call me, sir. Yes. It, it, I wish school you go. I wish school you go. Well, you know, I went to Manchester High School and then spent um, one year at Woolmers, but I'm told this is um, looking like immaculate. So I'm representing all. Both immaculate. Okay, yeah. But awesome. I'm representing Woolmers this morning. So it's better you just take Woolmers and stay with it. Um, no, Manchester High School, Woolmers, and in honor of my friends, who went to Immaculate, <laughs> all of us, all schools. Good morning, good morning. Uh, this is Leo Gilling and um, uh, on the Leo and Shirley show this Saturday morning, every Saturday morning at this time from nine, uh, from nine o'clock. Yes, we're on time this time, sir. Oh, yes, congratulations. Listen, I am standing at the front of the school with my whip, wait, no, with me. what do you think, my cane. No, so you, no, you better show up before nine o'clock or no. else kin. No, 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 we don't do that anymore. No, 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 no. You sound like you're looking at a jail work here, look. <laughs> well, listen, I saw me grow up, I saw me get it, I saw me take it, I saw me give it. I saw you anymore. get it, I say give me, me turn up at the front of the gate this morning, and anybody coming after nine o'clock, I get it. So well, I that, know better there. Everybody stay home then. If you know the lady, <laughs> uh, uh, there goes education. <laughs> you know, we were talking, you and I, right, a couple of days ago about, you know, um, Sunday being Mother's Day, teachers yes. had their days this week, nurses, everybody. But I can't school. say good morning, good happy, happy Mother's Day to you because you have school picnic this morning. <laughs> you can tell me tomorrow. Tomorrow I will tell you Mother's Day all day long, but right now. <laughs> You can tell my mother happy Mother's Day for such what, a what's good name again? What's your name again? No. <laughs> happy, mother's Day to, happy, happy Mother's Bailey. Day to Charlotte, mother. Mrs. Happy, Bailey, thank you very much. Happy, 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 happy Mother's Day to Mrs. Bailey. That's, that's Charlotte Bailey's mother. Correct. Thank you very much. All right. All right. And, and, and um, this week we're, we're celebrating one, 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 three or oh, four high schools. One, Woolmers, Manchester High, uh, Uncle Tree. And then, what did the one name? I'm going to do Immaculate, man. Immaculate, Immaculate, because it's white, right? It's uh, just yes. that these are people we have to confess. These are the only things we're under isolation. These are the only things we had in our closets and people could come up with. <laughs> me, couldn't, me couldn't find the car key. Me couldn't find the car key shirts. <laughs> You can't, no, and we can't go out to shop for it. So we're going to find whatever is close. And me find last year, me go on, on dinner dance and me see the Walmart thing. And the color them look nice. So me just say, hey, me a thief this one, yeah. And yeah. your high school get upset with you, you know, but we appreciate the props. Thank one you. One of these days, my high school will get props. But let me not worry about my high school. Let me get props one of these days. But, 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 but Walmart's. Is on top this morning. Good morning, Woolmarians. Good morning, Leo. As a Woolmarian, I say good morning. Oh, Lord. You never know. See, me catch you. Good morning. This, uh, you know, this morning we yeah. have several guests on our show this morning. First, our your man, our, our, um, the, the the former High Commissioner to Ing to London, um, Aluna Samba, coming up. Uh, she's okay. from Jamaica. So we yeah. are going to have some fun, right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Is this... <laughs> uh, she threw out some gems, and I, I kind of want to find out about some of that, but we'll get to that. Continue. A sayings, then, Carly. Sayings. Okay. Sayings. So I'm sitting them. Yes. So I'm sitting. And then, and then we, have, um, we have Dr. Grethel Bradford, psych psychotherapist. Dr. Um, uh, Beverly Gordon, psychotherapist. And we also have Carleen Tomlinson. Um, she's in the same field, mental health. And also we have Dervan Malcolm coming up. Come share some time with us on the air this morning. Awesome. What a lineup. I mean, it's, it's kind of really lovely. I mean, <laughs> more women, women power, but 
Yeah, yeah very happy. It look, it look, it look, it look bad down. But this week is Mother's Day weekend. Yes, yes. This is the, this is the time that we celebrate moms. Moms, we we, we celebrate the the motherhood, the 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 ladies who bear children, and especially the one them who bear them by themselves. And raise them and, you and raise, nurture them and take nurture, care of them. Yeah. yeah. We're also That's celebrating the men who are mothers who who took their children from from um, from a youthful age and grew them by themselves all the way. So I not just woman alone, mother, man, mother too. No, they're great dads, great fathers. Love that. We say mother. No. They are no, celebrating no. the fathers who are who are mothers this morning. Yeah, no, but thank you. So it go. It's all right, Leo. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Not to worry. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Because a lot, it, it, mother mothering doesn't have to be mother directly, but it could be grandmother who are yeah. mothers, and their fathers who are aunties who are mothers, sisters who are mothers. All of these mothers who are mothers. All of these uh, persons who are mothers. We are celebrating them today. So, anybody know what where, where Mother's Day mean? What do you mean of Mother's Day? Where it started? And where it came from? Where it come from? Yeah. You want me to tell you? Yeah, and I think, isn't it just mainly on this side of the world anyway? But go ahead. No, actually, it's right around. Mother's Day is a celebration honoring the mother of the family as well as motherhood. Motherhood, maternal bonds, and the influence of mothers in society. It is celebrated on various days in many parts of the world, most commonly in the months of March through May. Right here in the United States and in Jamaica, we do mothers in mm -hmm. May. And we have mother's party too. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> mother's party. And um, uh, you know, when when we think about mothers, we think about roses and flowers. Anything will look red and pretty, like somebody's lip this morning. Ha! Uh -huh, red, uh, the red head and the hair. Yeah, that's what we talk about mothers. Anything well, that looks. Go ahead. No, not necessarily, because for me, honestly, you know what I've always asked my children for as my gift: mm. just do do stuff that we can all enjoy together. And I tell you what, as, the, as they got older, cause I have two boys, right? It became, all right, so here's the thing though. I have sprinkled heads that need replacing, you know, little things that I, I need done because for me, I, I want something that I can point to years to come. And say, this is something that we're enjoying together, you know, or it has some benefit to me. So if they're listening and they're probably not, they're probably sleeping have five sprinkler heads that need relocating please and potentially replacing i have a fence i need to put around in the back around my <laughs> potatoes because my potatoes start to grow but you're talking about fatherly it. duties no 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 those are my presents those are my gifts that's showing appreciation oh, to me as a mother they must go do it this morning before what? it gets too hot I want to say good morning to yvette colburn uh commissioner yvette colburn watching us this morning Happy Mother's Day weekend to you. Happy Mother's Day to you, Barbara and Paula Cummings and Vivette Malcolm, Rosie Eiching, Eichinger, Maria Rochester, um, Faye Anderson. Um, we also have hey. Mother Melverton Newell on, on our show this morning. Good morning to you and happy Mother's Day weekend to you. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. We want to know what all of you guys are going to do for Mother's Day. We want to know everything that you guys are going to do uh, this weekend. Uh, if, if you're going to be, you know, turning on the bath and go lay down at night and have the glass of wine with some, with some red uh, candles around you, we want to know what the plans are. What are your plans? It's going to, it's going to be so different because think about it. Um, that's one of the busiest days, right? Shopping. Yes terms of restaurants etc cetera, etc cetera. usually that's when they make a lot that's of money Nobody money to see. Uh -huh. yeah. so they have to and, and people are not able to connect you can't fly to come see your mother spend time i mean my mother's uh. no so these are the challenges so it's going to be interesting to see what um what everyone is doing and it's certainly oh. 
well, well, the one mother, the one mother that I, I'm, 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 I'm thinking about this morning is the mother of um, Ahmad Arbery. Oh. You know, that, that, that young gentleman that got shot and killed in, in, in February. Um, yeah. I, but she is missing her son this week, this Mother's Day. But we see some a beautiful lady join us this morning. She has the prettiest smile in the world. It looked just like, oh my God. <laughs> She's just lighting up the place. Yes, she oh my is. God. Unmute yourself, um, commission, uh, I, I commissioner. Unmute yourself. There you go. Uh -huh. And we, we know Leo. that you are up with technology. So we don't have to tell you all of them things there, right? Yeah. <laughs> the thing, you know, the thing about it is that this particular season that we are in has forced so many of us into doing things in new ways that we never thought. I mean, who would have thought I'd be having a Zoom meeting? <laughs> I've been doing that every day now. Every day. I have been doing go-to meetings every day. I'm talking to people all over the world. I mean, I sit down here, as you can see, this is my desk now and has been for the last eight weeks. Yes. And I would hope that my organization has felt that other than my physical presence, I have not skipped a beat. <laughs> it's awesome. Me it get is, tired you know, by the end of the week, each week alone. I am so tired. Oh God. That all the meetings that oh I have God. to go to, oh my God. Listen, it is exhausting because it what is. I find, and, and I've been talking to, to some people about it, and I have to be learning this myself, is to pace myself to, to make sure that I get up Yes. And walk around. And, you know, sometimes it's really hard to do that. When you're in your office, you are sometimes interrupted. Um, sometimes you don't want the interruption, but it happens anyway. And you, you get a chance to get up, you greet people, you know, so you're actually getting up and, and doing something. But being at home and working is a little... It, it takes getting used to. It well, does. I, I will tell you, it's really, really hard too for some people yes. to actually have a normal life because I worked at home several times a year and believe you me, the things that happen, it's like you get up in the morning and you find that you don't eat, you, you're in your pajamas still for the, and you're like, okay, it's six o'clock. What do <laughs> I do? Right. Uh, well, one of the things that I learned, you notice I even have on um, earrings <laughs> and lipstick. <laughs> yes, yes, because I'm telling you, and you I dress up, dress up <laughs> for the really moment. Have, it's, like it's like you're it's like you're going out, right? <laughs> I've had to. I've actually had to. There are so many of these internet um, things that are around. You see these stories of people in their pajamas or having nothing below and forget. <laughs> I'm so conscious of that, that <laughs> I get up every morning. I make sure to have my cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. um, I'm lucky in the sense that I have um, people who work with me at home. So they bring me my breakfast. Usually I have to make sure that I don't have the video on. Or, or <laughs> the but, but it is true. You, you have to have an approach yes. to working from home, which is similar to working in your office. You get up, you get dressed, and you do what you have to do. Yes. It All is. Right. Let's, let's introduce All you right. officially because we didn't do any introduction. You notice that, right? We just start talk. Yeah, <laughs> it happens. I, but, but I think, I think um, Shernet has a question for you first about your name so that we can do no, it right. No, we need to yes. introduce properly and then we can ask go ahead please. I, I, I can't pronounce the, the 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 middle name okay so i'm gonna no it's not it. the middle name you know is that the middle name it's not my whole surname is dombe asamba you don't pronounce the n oh, or the e. dombe yes. asamba. Dombe okay. asamba. okay okay so and when you uh, finish with your introduction i'll tell you the story <laughs> <laughs> The only thing I'm going to say about the introduction um, is, is that we are talking to um, Alun Dambe Asamba, who is the former high commissioner to London. 
and we got to know each other pretty well during that time. But previously, um, Alun, what were you? Previously, probably we should start from <laughs> what I am really, <laughs> um, because I've had I have some people who says that I'm a lady who has so many professions they don't know, but um, I am actually a lawyer. Okay. In my yes. early days, I thought I was going to be an agriculturalist and a farmer. In fact, my oh. first application to the University of the West Indies was to do agriculture. That was in the 70s, you know, when Michael Mandy was prime minister and he was talking about, you know, I'm reflecting on a lot of things um, that Michael Mandy did. And one of them is his position about making sure that we feed ourselves. Relying on ourselves that to we survive. Can feed ourselves. And with this particular thing we're in now, it is so relevant that we yeah. feed ourselves. So I was convinced of that. When I was finished in high school, I was just so tired of school. I know I shouldn't say that to your listeners. But <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> but it was a good thing because I took a break and I volunteered. Well, I worked in a bank for a little while and discovered that was not for me. And I went to the Kingston Legal Aid Clinic and volunteered. It was on Spanish Town Road, if you can imagine. And um, after a while, Ronnie Thwaites, who was the director of the clinic, said to me, you're not staying here forever, you know. <laughs> you go to university. And, and so I applied for law. Well, let me put it this way. He got the forms and sat me down and says, fill it out. Wow. And I did. And I sent it off. And I was accepted. Um, with only my A-level qualifications, which, by the way, was science. <laughs> hey! Yes. Science. science. <laughs> and, and so I got into law, and I, I became a lawyer. And uh, I then was recruited to work in government. So I worked with the Jamaica Industrial Development Corporation, the GIDC at the time. Mm -hmm. And after that, I was recruited from GIDC to the credit union. Um, I think that probably people know me as the credit union lady. If there is any discussion they want to have about credit union, mm -hmm. it is, it is, they call me. And yes. I sometimes have to say, I'm not the movement, you know, I, I, there is a whole other set of people who are credit union people. But, and then after that, I was recruited by Prime Minister um, PJ Patterson. At first he named me a Senator and then spent quite a while convincing me to leave the credit union and become a member of parliament. Uh -huh. Eventually I, I decided to do that. And so I was a member of parliament for Southeast St. Anne and I was the minister of, at first when I was a senator, I spent a year being the minister of state in the ministry of industry, science, commerce, and technology. Uh -huh. and then when I became an MP, I was the minister of industry and tourism. tourism. Before you go, before you go, I want to recognize. Um, before you continue, I want to recognize that um, Dervan Malcolm is on. Dervan, yes. you can unmute yourself because I'm sure you're gonna have a couple of questions for um, oh, this morning. <laughs> Dervan and I are good friends. So Dervan was going to Calabar. <laughs> I tell you that. <laughs> Dervan, Dervan was on Calabar's um, debate debating team <laughs> and I met him up there. And then after he left Calabar, he joined the board of the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission. And I was on the board at the time, I was actually deputy chairman. So I know Derval and we know each other for a long time. And then during the period when I was high commissioner to the UK, oh, we did a lot of work. I thought, yes, I, was, I yeah. know he was there too. <laughs> Derval, good morning to you. Morning, Leo Gilling, and once again, morning, former High Commissioner Asamba. It's great to connect the Leo Gilling show <laughs> with the, the Jamaican diaspora live online. <laughs> we oh, also that's have, what we're doing. Yes, that's what, what we're doing. doing. And, and Shernet Bailey from Manchester is on. She's, this morning, she is a, a schoolgirl from uh, Woolmers and also Manchester High School. Hello. How are you? 
<laughs> Hello, Charlotte. How are you? I am fantastic. Good to talk to you. Same here. Same here. Sorry, couldn't find anything for color bar. He borrowed something from Walmart. Uh, yeah, I, I, I couldn't find the khaki khaki <laughs> shirt at all at all this morning. <laughs> well, I, I would show you my green and black from Calabar, but uh, I would uh, have uh, to open my chest and take uh, it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not an S you have on your chest. It's not an S, it's not an S. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, Alun, uh, you know, you came up with this long list of Jamaican sayings that we want to go over because Nina unders I don't understand some of them. If I you can find it, I've I, been I, trying to find it here myself. Oh, I have it. it, I have it, and I'll oh, say them God. for you. Don't worry. I, Actually, I had done something similar to that about a year ago because it came up on my 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 timeline. Also, you know, some of the same words. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I, no, not the same words. It's it was asking people to use a particular group of words in a sentence yes and I'll, I'll bring it up later on so it just happened that is about a year ago i had done that and and here it is this other list came so again. Let's, let's go with placa placa what does placa placa mean because the it never know what that mean that's the only one i didn't know you're joking yeah that's the See, only let one me, let me tell you the best thing i can think of to explain about plaque you know these words are onomatopoeic words you know you're supposed to, as you hear the word, you know the meaning. Exactly, yeah. exactly right. Exactly right. Think about it, sharing it. A mud hole. Yes. <laughs> you ever step into a mud hole yet? Yes. 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 And it's placa, placa. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It yeah. means it's wetty, wetty. Wetty, wetty, and muddy, muddy, and, muddy, and muddy. Pari parigy, parigy, right? Placa, placa. <laughs> um, uh, Durban, what is chaka, chaka? Uh, chaka Chaka is... Uh, oh, Lord, is Nirvana, oh, you fix it up so nice. It's something that is, is, is in, a, in a mess, uh, in, in, you know, disheveled. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're close to Chaka Chaka, right? Yes, yes. Not, not well put together. Not well put together. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. All right, I, um, I, I can call action it now. Thank you, thank you. Eh, so so, not the best kind of week, kind of puny, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Okay, yes, yeah, something yes, like that, yes, right? Yes. Right. Yes. So, I think you tell me what pia pia is. You tell me, you know, um, alone, what is pia pia? You know, what does it sound like to you? As I said <laughs> earlier on, these are onomatopoeic words. You a pia pia. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, a little bit, it's a little bit worse than thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you're, 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 poorly. You're, you're, you're really, really not look like you're, you're, you're not the kind of way you're supposed to be. You're just, it's yeah, true. Yeah. You know, like you get up out of, uh, like you get up out of your bed this morning. You don't you know, but you, know you have to go out. <laughs> Somebody pass and look at you. And say, Is what wrong with you? Oh, you look so pia pia. Pia pia. I true, true. <laughs> Don't I, I have one for you. Uh -huh. no, I have yes. one for you. What? How you kin pupalik? Kin pupalik. Upon my bed, me is kin pupalik. Because me and my sister. You know that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Kin pupalik, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. It's usually telling, on the bed. It's yeah. flipping. It's flipping, rolling over, right? Yeah. In, yeah. in other languages, they call it somersault. Ah, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Look here, and you, do, you know what you need, you know, is a nice little grade, not a hill. Yes. Like a grade. Yes. For all down. That's true. You <laughs> know, I wonder. I wonder if part of it had to do with you getting slapped or disciplined if you do it, because you're told not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, run from it. Yeah. Yeah. What's the word? I mean, kin popalik. Yeah. Pupa. How do you get? How do you get somersault from kin? Or uh, kin popalik from somersault? How do you get it? Well, that's what I'm saying. Maybe it's when you're doing your somersault and you're told not to do it, and if you don't stop, kin pupa lick. So it became kin pupa lick. I don't know. I'm working with it here. Devon, I know that you come from country, man. Come on, help us here. How do you get somersault or the kin pupa lick? Or vice versa? 
<laughs> yeah, well, maybe those who would have been scolded by their 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 fathers back then. There you uh, go. The, the nature of the feeling of being scolded could very well be if you don't do it properly, how you're going to land. It's going to feel like getting a hit. <laughs> I don't, think, I don't think you can find a literal translation. Not at all, not at all. You know, um, it, it probably comes from our African retention because a lot of yeah. these words, if if not all together, there is some little part of it yeah. that yeah. might be from our African retention. How and about broadopsy? How about broadopsy? Oh. That's easy, right? Well, you yeah. tell us. That sounds like English. The, the, you know, the, you, you, know you, you want up? to be, eh? yeah, brought, brought up. up. Yeah, brought well, up. Well, brought up. You know, you know, you know yeah. brought up. Yes. It's so like. If you have brought up, see, it means that you're well brought up. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> you, know. you have brought up, see, but usually the way how it is used is, Lord, our language sheet. You know, <laughs> brought up. No, brought up. <laughs> usually, no, no, come before brought up, see. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it, Bangarang. I know that this one going to get you. G's on P's. One holy put junk and stuff that are not organized. Bangarang, yes. Oh, you want so your Bangarang them? Yes. So that's almost like chaka chaka. Is that what you're saying? Almost what like chaka chaka. Am I right alone? <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> And I don't have the COVID. I, I was going to say because I, I don't want to catch that thing this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Bangarang, it, 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 it could be, you always hear people talk about your, all your, you have all your pat and Bangarang there. Bangarang. Yes, yes. Those are things. But Bangarang could be a real cuss out with a lot of That is exactly involved. right. That is and a lot of sound and noise, and you're creating. Why are you creating so much bangarang in the place? Oh, you know, as I said, that it probably connected. You ever try to find a pot? Yes, yes, yes. especially those of us who have them pack up on the sink. <laughs> yeah. You ever find a pot? Yes. Bangarang. So, yep. really, it is the noise and the confusion. Yes, that yes. Comes around. And there was a song by that name too, right? Wasn't there a song? It says, Mumana one, one Bangarang, yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and, and a former prime minister did 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 promise Bangarang if a certain thing wasn't wasn't done. Oh, is that right? Oh yes. okay. interesting. <laughs> Which brings us to the next word. What was he keeping up? Um the next word is karoches. And that's for their one. That's for their one. <laughs> yes, it it refers to certain paraphernalia, uh, but it's it's a disparaging way to look at the paraphernalia, you know. So you talk about your carouches. In other words, it's not it's not necessarily the these are not necessarily fineries, uh, or 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 it can also be uh, if someone is tracing uh, in Jamaican terms. You know, if they're taking you on, if they're, you know, they might say, move and go with your carouches uh, mm -hmm. and come take up your carouches. In other words, whatever your items are not even good enough to be in this place, come uh, and move them, you know, yes, they're yes, carouches. Yeah. Go with yes. your carouches. <laughs> yes. And then there are those now who are just trying to, uh, who, who, who are taking a position of, well, they're, they're smothering your spin. So before you call it carouches, let us let me take my carouches and go on. And go on for my business. Right. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's yeah. true. Well, there's one it's, coming up that me need to understand so very Beverly clearly. Trying to say hello, you know, Beverly. Yeah, oh, Be Doctor Bev. Oh, good morning, Beverly. You have to, you have to, you have to unmute. You have to unmute. Okay, unmute. She says she don't know how to unmute. I no. do know how to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> Stop with your carouches behavior. <laughs> okay, um, Alun, this one is for you. Before, before you move on from carouches, okay. you know, one of the things that is of concern, when, when I was in the UK, always of concern. Um, in, in, in Jamaica, we have a lot of people who we call street people. Yes. Oh. And in the UK, they're referred to as sleeping rough. And sleeping when you rough. pass them on, yeah, sleeping rough is the expression they use, oh. which really is on, on um, it's really the homeless and they're homeless. sleeping rough because oh. they're on the street. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and when you pass them, 
those people who have never left Jamaica and who feel that our homeless people are the only people in the world who are like that. Let me tell all of you, they're all over the world. Even in, even in the first world countries and in the UK, they're called, they're say, they say they're rough sleepers and they have the same kind of carouches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have one cart, one cart that they want to push, right? They have yeah. a cart that they're pushing. And they have the same kind of um, cardboard. But one of the things that always amazed me in London is that a lot of them have a dog. Mm. Oh. Yes, a lot of them have dogs. And I suppose like in the winter, it gives them warmth and, you know, okay. they have another body. I just wanted to say that in case yes. we feel that it's only Jamaican people, Jamaican street people have carouches. <laughs> 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 they call them the pack lady. Uh, they have a, a term for the pack lady in America, I think. Pack lady or the pack man, meaning that they have a whole heap of carouches around them with them push on the street. And, and uh, you know, they have food in there. They have clothes in there. They everything. have everything. Yes, yes. Can you introduce Dr. Gordon, please? I want to introduce Dr. Gordon, Dr. Beverly Gordon. You know, me never know where you come from, you know, you know Beverly. Where, where you come from? I'm from nowhere and everywhere. <laughs> but, yeah, but you come from somewhere at Jamaica. Which part of Jamaica? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I was born in Kingston. Oh, joy. But um, we moved to Kingston when I was still a, a baby. Mm -hmm. So I claim Linstead because that's what, that's the childhood that I had. And then we okay. left and went to England when I was 10. So that's why I say I'm from there and everywhere. Oh, really wait, Al Aloon, Aloon, you're from? But I am Jamaica. <laughs> you know a story about that, eh? Yes. As you talk about England. I took the bus one Saturday and went down to this particular um, town. It's, it's, it's well known in... in in one of those black English comedies. And I'm walking down and we're passing through, uh, passing by um, a supermarket and a lady comes out of the supermarket and she steps up. I don't know, she didn't see me. Can you imagine she didn't see me? me. <laughs> anyway, she either bounced into me or she stepped on me and she said, excuse me. <laughs> so I said to her, good morning, you must be Jamaican. <laughs> and she looked at me and she said, why you say that? And I said, because in England, the people them bounce you all over and them just walk past you. <laughs> That's an acknowledgement that they did. Oh. So she said, yes. And she looks at me. And um, I then says to her, so where in Jamaica are you from? She said, everywhere. Dr. Gordon, that is where I am. <laughs> <laughs> said, I'm a Jamaican. <laughs> and I said to her, no man, don't bother with that with me. Where in Jamaica are you from? And she said, all over. <laughs> what? Anyway, it was during the time when they had just started in the UK sending out these, these, these buses and things with the, with the sign on the side says, go oh, home. God. So I could, oh. after a while, I could understand why yes. she didn't know who I was and she didn't want to say much more. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Anyway, mm -hmm. as I'm talking to her, there a young man, as we say in Jamaica, bus the corner and come round and, and the young man sees me and he says, hi commissioner, it's way out up on the corner down here in a Peckham. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she, she looked at me. It dawned on her suddenly who, who I was. Mm -hmm. Well, she gave me one piece of hug up. She was smaller than me, but I'm telling you, I think my feet left the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, you know me never know you. Lord Jesus, let me take a picture. Do take a picture because the dad always I talk about you and so on. Well, after that, I heard everything. Full and receipt. <laughs> <laughs> about where she come from. Lindsay was included in it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was true because she was from St. Mary, via Linstead, all kinds of places. Okay. And so Jamaicans, I find that when you ask a Jamaican in Jamaica, where are you from? They don't think you're asking from where you, they not, don't think you're asking where you're from right now, you know? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's, true. Back, yeah, that's true. All the way back. Where you really come from? I tell you. <laughs> so, I think uh, here is the only person, though, that, that, do, that only come from one place at Jamaica, right? I think so, right? Durban? Yes, I, I was born 
uh, just after three o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon <laughs> at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital in downtown Kingston, Jamaica. <laughs> okay, Derwin, I know that I was born on your life, Derwin. Good morning. <laughs> Oh, he has lived a very limited life. Very limited. <laughs> that is why he didn't understand what King Pupali. <laughs> so I gave an interpretation. I did give you an interpretation. Good old Pupali. Good for you. Oh, my God. And so we were on, on the list. Let's go back to the list. Because now yeah. that Dr. Dr. Gordon, as Chuck Beverly has, has joined us, I'm going to give her the, the, the hardest one, Hatta Claps. What, what is Hatta Claps? Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Hatta Claps. Hello. I it's never a, heard of that one. Why you didn't give me corroches? It's not a shorty. It's Hatta Claps. It's Hatta Claps. Hatta Claps. Beverly, that don't tell you what it is. Hatta Claps. <laughs> Is what a heart of clubs are going to go on here? Can you imagine when a wife and a side chick or two meet together? <laughs> on fire. You still don't understand what that means? Yes, I, I understand now. I think Derwin is thinking about it. I see his face. No, no, no. That one is too easy. That's oh, too easy. Really? Wow. Yeah. Talk to me. <laughs> no, it, it, it's, it's a major calamity, a major a catastrophe, something earth shattering, something. Uh, something that is 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 going to 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 unnerve, to discombobulate, yes. uh, and all of these things. Yes. So discombobul is discombobulate a, a, um, an American word, a British word, or a Jamaican word? Oh, Lord of mercy! Because I never heard it until I came here. Oh. <laughs> discombobulate. <laughs> you know, as as Derval was giving his. His explanation, I said to myself, now that is why he's on the radio and I am not. <laughs> that is true. Because me, I mean, look, we are all here speaking the best Jamaican tongue we can talk. And him can't turn. I mean, what's up? <laughs> That's because it's Kingston him live all in You really never. Yeah. You, you never got pantomime. You know what I'm discovering? A lot of these words I learned from out of the pantomime, you know. Um, uh, when you again, uh, shall I um, leave and come back? No, <laughs> no. We, <laughs> ma mass run, mass run. You see, you a lot of them. Yes. 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 A lot that. of them I learned from out, especially when you know, usually there's a the, the, the protagonists in, in the pantomime, yes, one yes. set on one side and another yes. set on the other yes, side, and yes. they have them meet together as Lord Jesus. Is what are other clubs are going on? <laughs> a lot of these words I learned from the pandemic. Well, you, you will be able to tell a lot of different meaning, give a lot of different definitions here when, when we say John Joe. John <laughs> Joe. I know what John Joe is. I, the, oh. Where do you find, what the first place you find John Joe? What? Go, Dr. Gordon, I'm putting the doctor the in for the first place you, you find the it? First place you find John Joe. In the ground? Put it, put it no. another way. Uh, yeah, place you might find. Find it, it. okay. Might, might, might find it, okay. In the ground? No. Between people's toes? No. Oh! <laughs> no, Beverly. <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh, know. <laughs> Bum bread. You say you know oh, what John is. That's right. Oh, gosh, that was so easy. <laughs> It was so easy. <laughs> and she's still not telling us what it is, you know. Come on, it's, a, it's like fungus. Um, yeah, okay. Fungus growth. Yeah. The boy at all. No, 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 no. It's not bread. Don't do the hard old bread. I know that. I know that one. <laughs> you know, there's a Jamaican singer who's, who had a song that had that word in it. Derval, you know the song? Ah, uh, John Joe, John Joe. I don't mm. remember that one either. No. Look here. Mm. Sing it. Me? Sing it. Oh, man, I did have a song. You all remember it? <laughs> John Joe Arm. Oh, yes, 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 oh, yes, 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 yes. John Joe Arm. That's, boy, if somebody cuss you with yeah. that, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
but but you know because as, they're, they're, as, they're making, and, making and and yes. and the, and the time when I heard that song is probably the first and only time that he's ever been booed. <laughs> John your arm, yeah. you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> Do you remember when that was? That no. was uh, when Nelson Mandela uh -huh. was visited Jamaica uh, oh and was uh, there was some entertainment uh, so before. Yes, yes. Oh, not a uh, raining song. Yes, <laughs> right. So, so it was just another way of saying that somewhat, you know, uh, you know the the. the Let's just say the the greening of someone's arm. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Wow! We need you to ask all of them. All of them. All of them. Janet, I see you are learning a lot of things today. Especially as is Beverly, clearly. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you see, this is what happens when they take you out of your natural. Um, <laughs> A habitat, so to speak, Jamaican and take you habitat. all over the world, and then you know you lose part of your identity, even though you try so hard to keep all of it. So some and of these words discombobulated. Discombobulated. <laughs> discombobulated is an American. Yeah, you become discombobulated, but that's an American word. <laughs> you become discombobulated. <laughs> so, I, I you know, as Durban, a Leo, I think Durban should answer all, all the questions. All yes, them. yes, I think so too. <laughs> 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 you know, as a boy growing up, I grew up pretty poor. So, ginger bread wasn't a very um, far place for me. I, I I used to eat ginger bread because, you know, you don't have anything else to eat when you grow up. Mm -hmm. It's just you know, most people throw ginger bread as it start ginger. I start you know as it start gingering <laughs> <laughs> and throw it out. But you know when it start gingering, you know you have two choices. I right? take it make make um. Pudding, bread pudding, bread pudding, mm -hmm. or you know, you continue to eat it. You know, but but you know, um, seriously, my 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 grandmother on my father's side, um, can you imagine a lady whiter than me? Mm. So, she used to work at Saint Catherine District Prison. She was a warder, and they used to have the same problem of the bread because they didn't have the kind of um. Of, of technology that causes the bread to stay longer now. So you know how bread without without those additives will go off. And she used to tell us it's penicillin, so we must eat. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that before. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 I did hear that before. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Well, sure, I'm far wrong, <laughs> and that's and that's the that's the Jamaican pronunciation because yes. of course the word is penicillin. Yes. Yeah, it's penicillin. <laughs> All right, so, and so um, if you can tell us what Jim's preachy is, you'll make my day. Oh, go ahead. Well, it 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 really is to sneak upon someone to, uh, to 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 as skillfully and stealthily as possible. Uh, uh, surprise someone or, or whether in a good way or a bad way. Yeah. Oh, Jim Scrooge. Gervon, <laughs> who went to Calabar with you? <laughs> F for that. <laughs> <laughs> there is no way explain the word Jim Screechy <laughs> in the way that it's all, it's all sound it's all sound Jim Screechy I mean <laughs> so, <laughs> oh um, uh, Derwan by the way my son went to Calabar and he just I know came, he just came in here and says Derwan wouldn't have known that <laughs> Got not Jim Screech with nothing, right? <laughs> oh my god. All right. Um yeah, here is here is Dr. Beverly again. Oh me again? Joe Grind. Say that again? Oh, oh hold on. Oh, we need a commercial break. We need to take okay. a commercial break. Please, please, here. okay, go ahead. Please go ahead. deal with that one there. This is your program. <laughs> I think just hiding it up. This Don't is this is the Jamaican diaspora live online. Let me mute my microphone. I beg you. 
<laughs> we have an easier time now, you know. Okay. I, I didn't hear the you. word. <laughs> Leo, he has no idea what he's talking you about. You don't know what he's saying, though. <laughs> no? Okay, you're a marriage counselor. What did he say? <laughs> Joe what? Joe Grind. I mean, I can imagine all kinds of things, but I really don't know. <laughs> you couldn't be too far off if you imagine it. I can imagine all kinds of things. Probably things that I can't talk about. <laughs> Use German's language and explain it. Yes. 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 I have yes. no idea, though. Well, no, think of, think and, of and, your and, of business as a relationship therapist, as a therapist, marriage counselor. We're we talking about somebody who cheats on somebody? Oh! Close. Oh, <laughs> boys, please. Very close. Yeah. Uh, I really want Dervan to explain this one. So he's going to pick that up. <laughs> <laughs> I am learning a lot. <laughs> I, 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 I have to take this opportunity to, to say um, happy Mother's Day to each of you. Um, I, I know that, how, how many kids you have, uh, Beverly? Two. Two and, and alone? I have one son and two grandsons. Okay, and then, and then sure you have two, right? Sons, yes. It's 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 been my honor to to um to be around women and especially uh, women with that responsibility. They have a different appreciation for life. No matter how you grow up, when you're single, when you have kids, it mm -hmm. becomes totally a different kind of life. Eh? But um, but I also want to to your experience sometime this morning uh, with your mother. Uh, what was your experience growing up with your mother? I want that. So think about that for me also. All right. Dervan, are you back? You have to um, I'm unmute. Hearing you. unmute. I'm hearing you. Oh. I'm hearing you. Okay. So if you're on mute, uh, we just wanted to, uh, you know, uh, sometime this morning, I want us to go through that, 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 um, that evolving process of growing from child up to the age when you leave mama's body. Yeah, just think about that for me and say, we'll come back to that. Sure, no problem. Me. All right. But you said you wanted him to talk about Joe Grant. But Dur Dur yes. yes, Durban, we need you to, <laughs> to explain Joe Grind. I, I don't want to say, um, you know, preface it uh, with who or what, but uh, tell me Joe Grind. That's, that's an individual who is uh, in, uh, in the process of... <laughs> it's it's one who is engaged in cuckoldry. No, you have to explain the word. And no, do not use those kinds of words. To explain what word. <laughs> uh, some uh, no, but it, clearly it's it's obviously uh, Joe. The name, the word Joe there suggests that it's male first of all. Right. So only a male can be Joe Grind. Yes. <laughs> and uh, this this is an individual who is 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 the the, the subject of uh, of a love triangle in the sense that uh, here's a, a, sure a, a woman with her partner or her spouse whether married <laughs> or unmarried and for whatever reason and however it would have happened this individual uh, gets into the picture <laughs> and uh, that's the individual who apparently uh, enjoys the most uh, loving or, or the, the fact that he has to Jim Screechy uh, would, uh, would mean that, that it, it's almost, it, it's sweeter that way apparently. <laughs> That, 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 that um, the adrenaline rush and the energy that comes with having to sneakingly uh, yes. engage in in oh, uh, Jim's in, in copulation. <laughs> that uh, right. Well yes. said. Well said. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. 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 No, I, I want need to, to go hear. back on. I need to go back live on okay. four one oh six. So please end all of that there where we just left it. <laughs> 
we can't carry any of that on all right, all right, all right. okay all right. but continue uh, with the show mr while, he, while he goes on to back. back to power 106 mm -hmm. i just want to make this no, he, we are on power 106 so so yes so we have to be uh, and i'm going to be very circumspect in what i say so it could yeah. be on power 106 which is this <laughs> you see our language <laughs> one word there so are five minutes to explain. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh one word. It's so funny. Wow. <laughs> if you that both of them started with Jim and Joe. Jim it's and all Joe. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right, Shernet. Yes. Yeah. All right, Shernet. We're going to get you now. Brata. Oh, Brata. see, you give everybody else the easy one. <laughs> Beverly, darling, you can take it. No, you okay. go ahead, turn it. Go ahead, turn it. No, let me just give you a bracket. Go on, take it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and that explains it because it's that little extra that you get, you know, um, above so, what you're expecting. <laughs> yeah. You're back on. You're back on. Um, we're we're back live on Power One Hundred Six FM. So that uh, PG. Uh, uh, 18 rated uh, discussion uh, on the Leo and Shernet show. That PG rated part of it uh, is now going to fade and we come back into the all right, yes. The, so, the, so, the, the PG good. Right. PG, anyway, all right. PG one. All right. So so we are on Brata, Dervan, Brata. And uh, and Beverly is supposed to um, give us the the uh, definition I, of Brata. I thought I just did. It, oh, you um, did? Yeah, it's that little extra that you get above what you're expecting. Oh, you so like my sister would cook dinner yeah. and we generally have two dumplings and she give me an extra one. Right. She like me, right? Right. Or, or, the food, or the food done and somebody finds some more on her back. Right. Come, come, come give me, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, oh, which, it, next one, Peckish. 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 You alone. Perhaps let's let explain it the way Durban That's would. easy. That's exactly how I am feeling right now. <laughs> let explain it. Let Durban Durban, explain give it. us the peckishness then. Come, please. Yes. Mm. Peckish. Yeah, it's 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 uh it's a yearning for nourishment. <laughs> okay. <God>. Nourishment. <laughs> yes, but but it's a it, it can sometimes be uh uh what you call uh uh, and 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 you you're feeling you're feeling for something you you in terms of food it's a yes. particular thing that you're thinking of or you just it's it's not hungry. that you're necessarily you're not necessarily hungry it's not but, necessarily hungry hungry like really hungry but, but you just there. feel as if your nutrition is incomplete something yes. you feel i feel a little peckish you you feel it's like you could time. eat something whether you're hungry or not. It, it's just what you feel for okay, at that particular okay, okay. point in time. So that's you know, like snack and, time. And, and if it's you want to bring it down to hungry, it would be a little hungry. Not hungry, oh, hungry, hungry. No, that's good. That's a good one. That's true enough. It is yeah. actually true. Yes. That's, that's, that's the exact oh. definition of, of peckish. Because you're not really hungry. You, 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 you're almost there, but you're not there. You just want something for just go down that the stomach just simply yeah. just feel satisfied. Right? I'm sorry. I, I didn't have a mic at my stomach just now because I was <laughs> on cue. There was a bit of a growling happening there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, is, that, 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 that sounds like... No, that's, um, not, that's hungry. That's not peckish. That's, that's like white squall. That's not like white squall. That's not like white squall. White squall. That's not telling me or no. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you should ask Beverly what white squall means. What is white squall, Beverly? <laughs> um, it's when you're really, really, really hungry and um, there's a white stuff that form around your mouth. Oh, yes. You're hungry. <laughs> it shows. <laughs> you're good. You see? Oh, they have, where you learn that one? They have that in England too? Yes. Along the way. I learned it along the way. <laughs> 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 All right, um, uh, Butu, there, uh, no, I'm, I'm gonna leave Dervan now, but yes. let's, take, let's take it to Sharnet. Butu, Butu, you're unrefined, you're not sophisticated, and I'm trying to think of a word that um, Dervan would use. Um, oh, Lord. You are, <laughs> you are not cultured socially, perfect, perfect, 
choice Thank of word, so culture, not culture. Yes. It could be socially net. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, everybody's mm -hmm. turning uh -huh. Durban now. What's up? Yeah. Where, where, did I lose you guys? Are you guys okay? Another excellent one. <laughs> Leo, remember the late. Durban, the late. don't want to come across as being Butu. He's making sure <laughs> <laughs> What were you going to say, um, Alun? The late Rex Nettleford um, used this expression, a Butu in a Benz is still a Butu. <laughs> he had such a way with words, eh? Can, can you imagine your and, and when he said it, you know, it was so culture. <laughs> <laughs> your mother would not want you as a young lady to be with a butu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? That's mm -hmm. okay. Butu. And uh, even at my age still, no butu is allowed. Uh, there are many people who couldn't cross the gate. That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> and many people would remember they would have to meet those people out. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to Jim Screechy and meet those people. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they also don't want a Ginal. Nobody wants a, a trickster. Yes. Yes, a trickster. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's easy. <laughs> Because everybody uses that. Even you hear it in America. Did you know? No, I'm the Jamaican said that. No. Well, no. Jamaicans in America too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I mean, <laughs> wherever they are. Where, <laughs> where you get a general there from. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. And you know, my mother, my mother had this way of just looking at somebody and said, mm -hmm, watch that general. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, uh, yes. True, true. Mothers, mothers can be quite discerning. Yeah, yes. they, they know general ship when they see it. <laughs> general ship. Oh my god, yes, I forgot that one. <laughs> um, how about you know, I grew up with this one in class in primary school mostly. Uh pretty dance. Pretty hmm. dance. Oh yeah, they can dress up, but they don't know anything. Well, that's one way. No. Uh, sure, it's, sure, it's, it's me. Sure, sure, it's, it's me. It's me. It's me. No, no, just so you know, I'm not just a pretty face. Okay. <laughs> yes, when it's I was, mostly. When I was younger, people used to say, Lord, she's pretty. As a result of that, I made sure that they know that I was not dunce. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Right, right. Okay. Wingy, wingy, there one. Yeah, that's that's someone uh, who is petite uh, in print. <laughs> <Mother. They're, laughs> the, 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 yeah, it's a, a small framed individual. I, I think uh, it goes a little bit further yeah. than that, though. Then that isn't it, um, alone? It means that you look like you live far from your kitchen, exactly. <laughs> you look like you're, you're sick. No, no, but no, that would be going into Marga territory. <laughs> well, is... Yeah, Marga is fine, but then, but then it's whingy and Marga and look like you you really need some nourishment. No, whingy I think and right. Marga, whingy no. and Marga, two different words, but whingy have a little bit more than Marga. No, no, okay. whingy is more affectionate. Marga is a problem in Jamaica. We, if you are, if you appear to be too thin, we start to draw all kinds of conclusions that something is wrong with you, because we believe in eating food and looking. Uh, I'm not going to say voluptuous, but yeah. <laughs> Well, I can tell you, I've gotten Wingy and I've gotten Marga, okay? <laughs> I might have to see counseling Dr. Beverly. Well, I'm still I, trying to get Wingy. Well, the, 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 <laughs> when, I, when we were growing up, Wingy had something to do with your yeah, small frame, but it mostly is the kids who have like um, uh, asthma. The small frame kids who have asthma and they're very, very, very and, and they oh, always look kind of sickly, frail. sickly, frail. frail. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yes, yes. No, frail but frail. No, frail would be would be uh, uh, poorly, puny. poorly, poorly, yes. or but, puny. But, but, but puny. Puny. It would come yeah. looking, 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 looking skinny, and being puny, puny at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so okay. That okay. one word would cover those two expressions. Mm -hmm. Truly, truly. Yeah. Well, the one Miss Lou word is left. Um, and you know you guys can come up with more, but the one Miss Lou word is bununus, and I'm not gonna go to Alun first. 
I'm not going to Balloon first. I'm going to Shurnet first. Oh, well, I have two lovely boys that mm, I love. They're my boys. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's an example. How about you, Beverly? Well, I, I, I feel the same way as um, Sharnet. You know, it's a bono nunos, my little munchy munchy. A munchy. Okay. All right. All right. I, I know that Durban has a nice explanation for it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it really is uh, effusive. It's uh, <laughs> uh, showing or expressing gratitude, pleasure, uh with unrestrained i mean in an unrestrained way a heartfelt manner yes. yeah so it's more if if you say all right as 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 um alun says f um <laughs> and then alun give me yours up you know sometimes you have a, you have a good friend i mean i i agree with charlotte and beverly but sometimes you have a really good friend you haven't seen for a long time and then mm. the friend just come and you say, oh, Lord, look for me, Buna Nuno's friend, come here. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. See, all right. Uh -huh. It shows joy. Joy. It shows uh -huh. All of you are uh -huh. correct. All of you are correct. I love And I love affection, it. yes. Yeah. Affection. But I, I a little bit more than affection, though. It's, it's really mm -hmm. lovable affection. Really, yeah. uh, you know, Excessive in a way, but beautiful. Yeah. Heartfelt. Mm -hmm. Heartfelt. Heartfelt. Yes. You know what, though? I kind of knew the answers to all of these before, but having listened to Durban, I'm somewhat flamoxed. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> Hold on. I need to wrap. I need to wrap this program us, right now. Uh, well, let so let me wrap. Let me wrap on for one or six FM. I think can we we thank you. Hold on. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. Go no, I was just saying, can we thank you once again for the privilege of serving you on yet another edition of your program, the Jamaica and Diaspora, live online on Power 106 FM. Thanks to Leo and Shernet and the team uh, for linking with us here on the Jamaica and Diaspora live online. All things being well, the Jamaica and Diaspora live online returns uh, next Saturday. Till then, have a safe weekend. <laughs> so we have you, um, uh, Dervan has just ended his program. We're still here live. <laughs> this morning we have online, we have uh, with, with, along with me, Shernet um, Bailey, we have uh, Alun and Dambet Asamba. Did I say that right? Close enough. Oh, close enough. <laughs> okay. Uh, Beverly Gordon, Dervan Malcolm. There's another young lady who was supposed to join us, but I don't. I think Carlene just joined. Just Carleen. on you, isn't that amazing? Oh wow! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Um, Carlene um, and and both Beverly and Carlene are in the mental health um, uh, mental health sector. Uh, they and do work their their jobs, yes. And um, we want them here to help us this morning with a few. There goes Carlene. Good morning, Carlene. A uh, few of the, the the issues that we're facing today, but. Before we go into, and I think that's the SGPS. Who's that? That's Gretel? Did we get Gretel on? Bradford, yeah. Okay. Yes, All right. It um, it's uh, it's 10.01 in the morning. And I wanted to take a little break, a little bit away from the, the words, but go into Mother's Day weekend. I want to go into Mother's Day weekend, where we can talk about Mothers, there goes Gretel. Good morning, Gretel. How are you? Good morning, everybody. But just like, just like, <laughs> just like, um, Alun and Dervan, you guys, both of you, all of your your smiles just bright up the place and make it look good. You know, so I'm glad we're not on the pan line. Good wanna, morning. Morning. Good morning. I, 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 I wanted to to us to go into um, Mother's Day, and I, I I told the others, Gretel, before you came on, so I'll take you last to think about their mothers when they were growing up. What are the special things that they can think of? And Dervan, I know that you just uh, celebrated um, the, the, the passing of your mom last week. Is that, is that last week you had an anniversary? Oh, the anniversary of her birth, yes. Of her birth, okay, I see. Yes. Okay, um, um, when, when, um, how old would she be? Uh, it would have been 67. 67. Uh, 67. She, she, she was actually born on the 2nd of May, 
but based on, you, you know how it was in Jamaica back then, the registration <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, was a different date, which would have yes. been the 3rd of May. So born on the 2nd, register, registered on the 3rd. So she was really born on the 2nd. Okay. My <laughs> her birth too. certificate says the 3rd. My mother too. She, she said she was born on the 22nd, but the person who went down to the registration office, she only heard... Um, she only heard second, but my grandmother actually said 22nd, <laughs> but she only heard, she only remembered second. And so her birth certificate says second, but she's actually born on the 22nd. So we know how that goes. I think so that I, happens all over Jamaica. Yes. My, my mother, we grew up knowing she was born on the 29th of July. And then when we got her birth certificate, it said the 31st. So we just kind of went on celebrating. <laughs> well, I, I beat that because my, I, have a relative, I have a relative that she, we celebrate her birthday on October, I think it's 20 something, but she really was born on November 30th. Oh my God. <laughs> like the whole month. <laughs> it, actually get, it, it actually can get worse than that because okay. my mom was born on October 20th, but her birth certificate says April 13th. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that is oh, no. my, my, my father, I'll tell you this, my father <laughs> says, no, I don't know how he knows that, but he says he was born on the 1st of April. Mm. However, in those days, Tom Fool Day was a serious thing in Jamaica. <laughs> it was all over the world. And they didn't register him as being born on Tom Fool Day because they didn't want a fool fool boy. <laughs> he registered on the 4th of April. Oh, my God. <laughs> It was a deliberate thing. It wasn't a mistake. <laughs> well, now that you have all had a good laugh, I should let you know my wife was born on the 1st of April. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the 1st of April. Huh? They may really say town fool no more. Everybody got to do this American thing, but all fool. All fool. Real group. Town fool is not a good day to burn at all, at all, at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alun, uh, we never got a chance to hear um, your name. It's so oh, beautiful. The name story. So oh, yeah. okay. Okay, my, my maiden name is Wood, and I just want to just big up all my family in foreign as a result of me. Charles is here. Charles is here too. Who are watching this because my brother Charles sent it out to everybody, so hopefully they're watching. I met my husband. I went to the University of Pittsburgh, and uh, very soon after I got there, Actually, it was, Jim, it was the U.S. Labor Day, to tell you the truth. I was at a party, and they brought a group of, of, of um, Africans who were also at the University of Pittsburgh doing a summer program to come Excuse me, can, can I interrupt you one second, please? Carlene, I think there's something in your background yes, that's it's picking, picking up. up. Yes. Oh. yes. Could you Maybe mute it? Maybe you have oh. two, two devices. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead so I met this very handsome man. Let me tell him something. Handsome. Speak like Derval. <laughs> speak spooky kind. And um, we got into a relationship. He was from the Central African Republic, which is a Francophone country, hence the name Dambe Asamba. And um, we got married after all. Not long enough, that is the truth. Mm. We got married too soon. And there were things that I ought to have seen that I didn't see. But Lord, when you're in love, you're fool, you see? No so comments. That's another story. And another <laughs> program, Leo. <laughs> so I got married to this man and I took the name. Doesn't it roll off your tongue nicely? Alu Dombe Asamba. Somebody yes, Dombe Asamba. In fact, I don't think many people have that name. But surprisingly, you know, I got a, a link up from a young man from the Central African Republic who is a dead image of my, my husband with the name. It turns out he was my husband's son oh. before I met him. So that's where I got the name from. And then when the marriage broke down, think about it. I went away. I met this man. I get married. I come back to Jamaica. Well, I did get married in Jamaica, but I come back to Jamaica with this new name. 
and had to change everything into this new name. So when the marriage broke down, I had to make a decision. Do I go back to wood or do I keep it? And I decided to keep it. Okay. I have a good friend who tell me that you think I get married to the man just so I could have well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's a good attitude too. What about you? Probably a little bit of truth in it. <laughs> but that's how I got the name. And, and, and as I said, he was from the Central African Republic and he, was, he would get very angry whenever he came to Jamaica and people would assume that he was from Nigeria. Okay. Because a lot of Jamaicans think that Africans are Nigerians. Mm. Oh. They don't remember all the other people. And that Africa is a continent which is made up of many, many different countries. Yes, yes. So, Sharnet, sure that's how I got the name. I decided to keep it. Good and, for you. Um, it, it, it's good. Nobody will ever mistake me for anybody else. And I'll tell you, one time somebody broke into my house and stole my passport. Mm. And they found the passport in a scandal bag on church street downtown somebody was walking and kicked the scandal bag and felt something was in it and looked in it and saw it was my passport i think that what happened is that the the thieves who saw my passport knew that they knew exactly where it was. <laughs> totally useless. they stole my son's passport at the same time and put a different picture in it yeah and tried to go through the airport but you know i was they were caught yes. because whoever um, it's not gonna happen. looked at it just felt this person didn't look like a young man who went to Calabar. But the police officer Why? said, he, he just didn't look like, you know, it, mm. I, I think police officers build an intuition something that they know they know and and so i got a call one morning at 6 30 can you imagine to say did your son lose his passport and i said yes and they said well we saw we caught somebody going through the airport with your son's passport oh my gosh what so mine mine now they threw it away mm -hmm. my son's own they tried to it because his oh. name is not number assemble oh but listen wow. now i i'm going to have to go in a little while so if you don't mind could I be the first one? To yes, start? please. Tell me about your mom. I want to know about your mom and how you grew up with your mom. Uh, your mom come from country, which one of the countries she come from and how my was mother growing was, up with mom? My mother was born in Spanish town um, as, and lived very close to my father um, in Spanish town. Those days, Spanish town is not the Spanish town that it is now. Yes. Um, and... Her, her, my, my grandmother, my mother's mother came to Jamaica on a, on a boat from India. I mean, I could, that's another story. Oh my and my God. father's mother was a mulatto. Um, so it was a, a strange marriage at the time because Indian people did not marry okay. non-Indian people. It don't matter how white they were. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so my mom... Did, didn't get to finish school because she was the third of a large family and she had to stay home and look after all the children um, while my, my grandparents work. My mom had, had eight children. When I grew up, I used to think my mother's first name was Poor. And the reason for that is that her own family called her Poor Gloria. Mm. It was oh. always poor Gloria and her eight picnic them. Oh, Jesus. But guess what? She was not poor. My mother worked at home. She was a housewife. Because my mother was always at home. All of our friends were always at home. All of our friends came to our house. All of them called mommy, moms. She cooked for 10 people, which was what is in our family, but she could always feed. 15 people and every day we fed you know it, it was just amazing how that food could stretch yes and she had her own relationship with our friends which was outside of the relationship that we had with our friends our friends then had their own relationship with my mother when my mother died four years ago I was 
absolutely amazed at the people who came to her funeral. Some people I hadn't seen for like 20 years. Yes. And that's because they kept their relationship with my mother and they were there. We, we, <laughs> we, I talk about this, that we catered for 400 persons for the after funeral repast. And the caterer told me that he knew that was foolishness that I was talking about when I told him 400. And he cooked for 600 people. And those of us in the family, we only got the curry gravy. <laughs> That's nice to hear. But that was my mom. She could feed as you come up into the house. I remember our kettle was always on. We were always serving coffee and tea. Oh. You're a coffee lady. I didn't drink coffee in those days. I drank tea, but you could always get coffee and tea at our house. Always. Um, they come in, my mother would say, can I give you a cup of coffee? Or okay. some people would say tea. But she was the epitome of a, of a housewife, of somebody who stayed home, who looked after the family and who looked after everybody who the family brought. Yes. And when, when I moved to live out in Monique, it was very strange. I said to my parents, you need to come and live with me. By then, my father was not so well. And he quickly said, yes, he would come. And my mother said, what are you going out there for? Because, yes, we had lived out here about 30 years before. But um, she said she didn't know anybody and da, 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 and so on. Anyway, I convinced them to come and they came. And my mother... It didn't matter that she didn't know anybody. Everybody got to see her. Everybody got used to her. And people would just come up the hill to come and look for Miss Gloria. Oh, and she knew more about what was happening in this community than I knew even when I was a member of parliament. Because people would tell her things. Probably it was to tell me what people would tell her things. And, and so that was my mother. Yes. And I go back to the having eight children because my aunts and uncles who had less um, children than my mother, they were always talking about how Gloria have all of these children. And I remember one year, I was a little girl, but it's a memory that stuck in my mind. Her sisters came to tell her about birth control. I was hiding under the bed and I heard the conversation. And my mother said to, to them, no, my love, that not going to work with us you know, because my father is a Roman Catholic and we don't believe in birth control. My mom was not. She was. She grew up as a Muslim, and she became a Catholic about two years before she died. None of our friends who were Catholics knew that my mother was not a Roman Catholic. Oh. Okay, In fact, okay. I had this conversation recently with 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 a priest. Um, but but I'm saying that to say, when my mother got ill, I remember one of my aunts saying, "Boy, Gloria, lucky." She lucky bad man because it no matter where in the world our children there's our head hurt her, she's Indeed. there there. And it was yes. true. Once when I was in the UK, mommy had to be in the hospital and I called and I asked who was there. And they called the names of everybody who was there. And there was somebody who was there and I said, wait, what is Mark doing there? And I heard, oh, Mark is here because Dominic, who's my son, couldn't come. So Mark came to represent <laughs> I mean, this is just amazing, you know? So, so where, where do you, where, where is it in the eighth? Where are you placed first? I, I am number one, you know, but they like to think that I am not. And I just <laughs> know them to continue because it means that they look after me. Okay. Oh, my brothers are excellent. My four brothers are just wonderful. Aww, they awesome. look after me. It's Grethel, what do you think? Um, uh, no, let, let, me, let me put this. Dr. Grethel, um, how do you see uh, alone and her mom from a psychological psychotherapist standpoint? <laughs> so you had to, you had to hit me with that one, right? Yes. Um, I think that, um, first of all, her mother set a solid foundation for her. That's the first thing, right? Yes, yes. And her mother established that in love comes um, in such a way that it can spread out and spread out and spread out, right? Yes. And I think that okay. could be one of the reasons why she is, in fact, ambassador. <laughs> you know, they're spreading the love that's how started oh. you know in the home 
Great and, connection. You know, the, yes, <coughs> and even the, the whole thing about can I give you a cup of coffee and the house having, you know, always coffee and tea. You learn that in the early stages, hospitality, yes. right? And so now she, it's easy and has been maybe easier for her to be able to pull all different kinds of people in her, in her space because her mother did that. So she learned it very early in life. Oh my God, yeah. what a nice one. That's, that's really so good. <laughs> and listen, um, thank you very much for, for, for that because that is so, so true. And um, I think my brothers and sisters learned that also from my mom. I mean, we could tell you about the things we learned from a father, but that's for another story. And and listen, I really have to go because yeah, my day is getting in on me. It was wonderful. It yeah, was wonderful. It's really great. Thank you so. Thank you for being here. Right. So <laughs> right. I saw. I was watching it earlier on, and you made me laugh so much. I was <laughs> cracking up. <laughs> you know, there is a there is a big. Uh, the, the, we used to call it empresario who is constantly telling me that as soon as I retire, he's going to take me on 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 a tour because mm -hmm. I need to do some stand-up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Laloon, oh thank God, you so, so much, much for being here. Joy, it was a joy, Leo. Yeah, it was an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you, you so much. You. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> Thank you. No, we're going to turn on Dervan. You know that, right? We're turning to Dervan now. Dervan, tell us about mommy, you know, how you grew. I, I know your brother. Uh, yeah, I don't know how many of you in the family that mommy had and stuff. So tell us about um, mommy. My, late, my mother, my late mother, Miriam Roberts, as I indicated, born on the second of May uh, back in 1953 and uh, she she was very playful she was very playful uh, she was very industrious she worked in what I like to call Bell Road Industrial Estate okay well, that's the name anyway Bell Road what that's is that? industrial that's near to, that's off Spanish Town Road, near, oh. near three miles, okay. that entire area where we had all these manufacturing right. companies in Jamaica. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, when, yeah, when manufacturing used to be king in Jamaica. And uh, so I like to tell people I was conceived in, uh, in, in Bell Road Industrial Estate because it was, that's where she met my father. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> right and i you know I, and that would have impacted you know the the kind of person i am i love i love to serve i love to work i i i'm always just doing something that that is that is uh that 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 keeps me active uh whatever it is just just working serving etc so that's that's how I, I came about, but I was not the first. My my sister was before me uh, in that union. My big sister, she's um, yeah. And then uh, we we I'm trying to remember. We used to live at a couple of places. We used to live at one stage in Waterford, in uh, Portmore, St. Catherine. But when I was born. We, and I know this because it's on my birth certificate. Uh, we lived in Rockfort. Oh. So Rockfort would have been the, the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so we have lived in Rockfort, Waterford, Oakland Road, Oakland Crescent, uh, Delacree Lane. So you've been around Kingston? And, yes, yeah, for <laughs> sure. And also, and, and you know, the Delacree Park housing scheme. In fact, my mo mother's house is still very much there. And uh, but growing up, generally, we we had uh, we had a wonderful relationship with our mom. Uh, she, as I said, she was quite playful. So she would, for mm -hmm. example, I remember her. I remember her, you know, uh, administering my 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 bath, bathing me. And uh, and uh, she would 
sing this song. And, and uh, well, leave it to your imagination. Uh, while bathing me, she would sing this song. I am a little teapot short. <laughs> 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 oh my god <laughs> and uh, yeah i'll never forget that and uh, right so she was fun i mean every i mean she she was also quite an impersonator maybe that's where i get the talent from yes, yes, so indeed. she could she t she told stories we were regaled with all kinds of stories whether fables or <laughs> Or, or real life stories, and she would change her voice to reflect uh, the, the the tone of of whoever she was she was uh, impersonating. Uh, so that there was there was that, but and she would she would feed us with every opportunity to share with us uh, a, a gem, uh, a saying, you know, which is why on the programs I host, invariably I reference her as my mother would say. And it's real. I mean, she had a, a, a phrase for everything. She had a proverb uh, for everything. And, uh, you know, all unfair games played twice. Today for me, tomorrow for you. Okay. Uh, and so on and so forth. So, so where, where is she from? Oh, uh, she is originally, she was born in Portland. She was born in Norwich in Portland. Okay. Uh, her father <laughs> is from Portland. Her mother, uh, is from uh, from Wakefield in in near Linstead in St Catherine. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. And she was an only child actually. She was oh. an only child. Okay. Okay. And uh, right. So her father used to be uh, what's the position now? They used to call him headman <laughs> on a he was on a plantation in Pasley plantation. Gardens. Yes. Pasley Gardens. Yes. Okay. He okay. was headman. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Robert. So you know him. You know him well. Do you know you knew your grandfather. Oh yes, man. We used to go to Portland a lot with my mother, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and and uh, just enjoy being in his company. I mean, in his uh, the late latter part of his life, he developed uh, uh, Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. and even then, he was still quite charming and. And we were having conversations. He hadn't a clue what we were talking about, but he was, oh, yes, man. Yes, yes, yes. True, true. <laughs> <laughs> so he kept that connection there. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's you know, that's that's where she was from. She went to, to Norwich, the school in Norwich, Norwich Primary School. Tell me uh, about she, Christmas. Tell me about Christmas with mother, with mama. Oh, Lord. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> No, you know you have to take out the crockery out of the Oh, crockery. <laughs> yeah, wash crockery. It, right? Like once a year. <laughs> you know what I'm speaking? Because, you know, it's Christmas time, so you wash everything. You're clean. You have to have new curtain as well. Absolutely. And she used to sew. She used to work with Davon Corporation, who made pretty much all the khaki uniforms in Jamaica. Oh, Davon. Uh, yes. And she worked at the at the the um, what's the other factory? Was it the glass factory or the paper factory as well at mm -hmm. Bell Road Industrial Estate? Uh, and uh, yeah, so it, with Christmas time, everything at you wash, you clean, you paint, <laughs> you know. And and to this day, I I used to enjoy housework, and I still do to this day. So I will change the drapes or the curtains if I need to. I will wash, I will cook, I'll do everything. I, and I feel good whenever I do these things. I love ironing as well. So yeah, all of these things. Uh, she, 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 I like to tell people she gave me everything. She gave, well, oh. I get, yeah, she poured out into me. So I am my mother's child. Exactly. Oh, boy. Yeah, if you want to know the kind of person my mother was, oh. well, yeah, Jesus. I am my mother's child. You're her, are you an only child? No. Good no. question. Yes, because she had, well, there, first there were uh, two of us. Uh, my, my, as I said, my big sister. And, uh, and, and we were, it was only two of us for quite some time uh, until she, my, my father, I never did hear the story, but 
uh, that the relationship didn't work out uh, to the point of right. So, so uh, it was just us, myself and my sister and my mother. Oh, uh, myself, my sister, and you know our, our mother, okay. Okay. and uh, we, yeah, we did everything together. Quite frankly, back then, and as I said, now later on down the road. Uh, when we used to live on Oakland, Oakland Road, uh, we used to live in this tenement yard. And uh, one of those who used to live in the tenement yard had a brother uh, from Portland, from Portland, who, who uh, decided to come to Kingston and was living uh, in that tenement yard. And that's where he met my mother. And uh, together they had two children. So my mother, my mother has two pairs, two pairs. She had two right. pairs, right. as in uh, boy, two boys, girl, boy, right, boy, right. Girl. Mm -hmm. right. So, so the other two came uh, later, and and so eventually she had four. So it was four of us. So, so, so what does mother. what does Mother's Day mean to you then? Oh well, she. I, 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 I don't necessarily, I don't need Mother's Day uh, personally because my mother is in me. She lives yes. in me. She yes. lives in me. Wow. So it, it doesn't get any better than that. And my, myself and my, 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 especially my sisters, uh, we, we always have fun when we're having conversations, just remembering her, talking about her, and using the expressions. So I like to use the expressions like she could, you know, my mother used to use in my conversation with my big sister, for example. And uh, that you that just cracks us up whenever yes. we do that. And so, you know, there's a song that says, I remember mama in a happy way. Yes. Yeah, yeah. really, all, I mean, just to talk about her and, I so, think about her. It's ne never a sad moment. That's good. Never a never a sad moment. All right, that's good to hear, man. Um, Carleen and and Beverly, I, I I need you to chime in on on Dervan. I want to hear. I want to see Dervan. <laughs> well, I, you can see the joy. You can see the joy when he speaks. I mean, you just light up. It's so <laughs> obvious. You just light up when you were yes. talking about her. Yes, it's really nice to see him expressing mm -hmm. himself about mommy. Yeah, I, I loved. I loved when he said she lives in me. Yes, <laughs> you know, because I, I think that when we lose someone, a parent, one of the most wonderful things is to feel as if you can carry on that person's legacy. And so, when you feel as if that person has passed on to you some things of value, and then you can live it out in your own life. So, you're, you're, there's some sadness, of course, at losing the person, but then there's this joy that comes from being able to carry on that person's legacy. I love it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and it does help. We have, I don't want to, I, I'm going to wrap now. No, I, man, that's good. I, yeah, but I'm saying it does help that we have tons of pictures and i mean oh. she she captured every moment every moment was captured one way or another and, That's and, and, yeah that 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 so i have a lot of joy just going through pictures every now and then i i go That's through so the nice. pictures so yeah nice. it's oh yeah God. so so she's like i said she lives in me and uh she's still as far as i'm concerned yeah yeah, Dervan. yeah. Dervan, that's I, I think this is the best moment. And you and I talk a lot, but you know how me feel about my mother. And, I, and, and it just feels really, really good to see and to listen to you and to watch your face as you express about mom. That, that you, you can't get it any better than that. Yeah. My, my mom means the world to me too. I love, I love that you have the pictures because she passed young. Right, yeah. she died when she was young. Yeah. Happy yeah. for you that you got the pictures and a close family. Griffin. Yeah. Yes. Um, in terms of Durban, you mean? Yeah, man. What do I think? Um, I liked what Beverly said. Yes, when he said his mom lives in him. Yes. And you can see that. There is yeah. no doubt about that. And I think um, you know, there's something that we talk about social learning. 
and he has learned a lot from his mother and he appears to be more than willing to keep yes. carrying it on and to continue her legacy. Yes. And I think um, that's just one of the best ways that a child can honor you know, his or her mom, just yes. continuing her legacy. Yes. No, um, we have, there's a young man, his name is Ahmad Arbery who, who passed, oh, who, who was shot recently. And, I, I'm not rehashing the story. I, I am just feeling it for the mother who's mm. who's who's coming up to, to Mother's Day, you know, and and has to deal with the loss of a child. Um, you know, no parent, no mother, wants to 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 see their children go that early and before them, and and just to know and that you're going to. The circumstances too. The circumstances alone. The circumstances, is yeah, and, and so um, you know, just this. What would what would be going through her mind, Beverly and Carleen, or, or Carleen? What 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 would be going through her mind at this point in time? Well, I, I I want to acknowledge also that I think it was her efforts that she was so persistent after his death or his murder, um, that she was so persistent and it with the authorities in getting justice and trying to get justice for her son. So you know that's a mama beer. Yes. You know, she's yes. gonna, she was trying to do the best for her boy. And, uh, you know, it has to be a very difficult day for her. And uh, <clears throat> we, for today, for Mother's Day tomorrow, not just um, somebody who's lost a child, it's difficult for somebody who's lost it, but also for somebody who's lost their mother or mm -hmm. for somebody who may have be having fertility issues and they themselves want to be a mommy. <clears throat> they haven't had the opportunity or maybe mom was not the greatest mom so mother's day for some it can be very heavy and laden with grief and um you know hopefully those persons are able to surround themselves with love and um find other rituals to um to not honor the day but to observe the day because it can be it, it can be quite challenging for someone who's extremely lost who's a mother to you beverly who's a mother who is a mother? Yeah. So sometimes we ask the question, if, um, do you have to give birth to someone to be a mother? And in a sense, yes, biologically, yes. But there are individuals who mother um, other individuals by the way they care for them, they nurture them, they, they try to instill in them the values that they think are important. And um, they look out for that person's best interest. You know, you just mentioned the young man, Ahmad. And honestly, the word that comes to my mind is anguish, absolute anguish. I have a son, my youngest son is 25 and he's gonna turn 26 in July. And so I, I found myself thinking about this mother and I'm imagining that, she's, that she has felt or maybe is still feeling anger, plain, straight up, cold, anger mm -hmm. the idea that somebody could take the life the precious life of that child who grew, grew within you who you spent those nine months getting to know before they were even born and then watching them grow up and and um going through all the various stages of their life and just when when they're on the cusp of actually you know, branching out for themselves, for somebody to coldly take their life because for whatever reason, apparently they don't feel that this person is valuable enough to be treated as a human being. Mm -hmm. This is something that has happened in this country so many times and I am absolutely sick of it. Mm -hmm. And I feel as if this mother must have felt or is still feeling anger. I would be angry. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Very angry. Help with that. There is no getting over that ever. Mm, yeah, listen, it is difficult. Sure, sure it. What, what makes mothers so different? I look at, different from fathers. Look, I look at the hen, right? And the cock. I look at <laughs> the lioness and the lion. And you look at the duck and the ducklings. That every time you see the children, you see the mother. Same thing in human beings. Whenever you see the children, what, what's, what, 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 what in nature that makes it so different from, you know, and so natural 
that a mother or the representation of a mother, the hens, they actually hatched those chickens that they weren't, they didn't come directly out of them. They but were okay, hatched so and, but it, they're you, still mother. What, what, what's, what, what's the difference here? You answer the question and it's just nature. That's how we're built. That's how we're nurturing, we're caring. We actually bring uh, children or cats or dogs or whatever into the world. That's by nature what we do. Females were made to be nurturing and stronger and just be a part for the most part because it was bi biological and I guess it, it developed eventually into a psyche that we are caregivers and this is what we're, we're doing. And we even do it beyond our own children always it's easier and uh, granted a lot of men are like that too you know a lot of men will care for um for kids that are not theirs and it's the instinct i guess so Durban. yes no i'm i'm with the the, the biological point that it, it that biology is a is a is a is a big part of it uh and uh, it, it so women were 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 made for this in, in the sense you know the the and and it's 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 one of those one of those uh things that we men shouldn't shouldn't i don't want to say worry too much about but shouldn't feel less than but just understand that 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 this is this is how how it is in terms of the tendency of the of the of the children to 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 follow mom and there are all kinds of other reasons why that is so but i think the main one is biology yes uh, i think i think that's the main that's the main uh, would, you, reason. would you say that warmth is it as when they're born the warmth of mom is right there all the time and 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 that, that that's the connection um, warm Leo, because of body. Go ahead. Yeah, Leo, I want to say that there is research being done right now and has been done that um, is supporting the idea that after the child's birth, parts of the fetal cell remains in the mother's body. Oh. So at birth, most of the cells are supposed to have left the mother's body, you know, through birth. But it is thought that some still remains throughout the mother's body. And that, in fact, could um, sort of explain why it is that moms still feel that connection to the child. So it would be good to look at the research that's around that. Um, and, and also, if you think about it, the mother society trains us as mothers to, to the minute we know that we are pregnant to become protective of what is inside of us yes. and, and and there is a reason why at birth if a mother is going to give away her child for adoption they try not to put that child on the mother's belly or to have the baby have contact with the mother because that bodily warmth and you take in those fetal tissues that are still there, the nine months in which that baby is hearing mommy's voice and that child is moving around. And when she's not moving or he's not moving, mom sick and try to get her out if it's still alive. At the very unconscious level, we are we are literally nurturing our child without us even knowing about it. So it becomes even more natural for us once the child is born for us to continue that. And then yes. this constant, constant interaction will kind of sort of feed into the mother's need to just kind of shelter, protect, and hone that child, you know, yes. keep that child close to them. Carlene, you have a thought? No. <laughs> yes. Um, go ahead, turn it. You have something? No? No, not at all. Oh, what about yeah, you, Leo? Tell I us think, about your. Uh, tell us about your experience with your. My mom. mom? Yeah. God of mercy. Let me tell you something about my mother. My mother, everything that I do today, I believe, has a direct relationship to growing up with my mother. My mother is a business a businesswoman. I, I think she was the the first um, higgler on the North Coast. And we would walk, me and my mom 
would walk um, from set Friday evening to Sunday. On a Friday, we'll go in front of a hotel and sit down and she just open our grip and sell off everything. Just the right? two of you? What about just the, the two of us, yes. And you, you know, she stands at the hotel and I'd go down to the beach and go look on um, the tourists, them a ski and, and all that kind of thing there. But she stays right there and sell everything off on a Friday evening because she had gone to Kingston the Tuesday and the Thursday. I, mean, I don't know if you know, King Street was the, ep the, the epicenter of the world, King Street, where every business that you want, to, um, uh, wholesale business, you know, Hannah's and all of these little uh, Indian stores and, you know, all of these places were open for business and it's mostly wholesale. So my mm -hmm. mom would go to King Street, walk down King Street and pick up stuff and put in our grip Friday and Saturday. So Friday we would be in front of the, the hotel. Saturday was the hardest day because we would take Macaulay's bus all the way, that's about nine miles away from my home up into a uh, retreat and we'd walk three miles down retreat and stop at every house and sell somebody something, right? And they used to call me Hannah because my shoes used to burn me. It's a leather shoes and the sun hot. And because it's hot, me have to take out the shoes and hold it on me and carry the grip on my head for three miles. I'm going to tell you something, there are three rough, rough miles. But I tell you this, I watched my mom convert that walking business to buying her first car, to buying her second car. We move out of a tenement yard, right? With, 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 with how much? Four, six rooms, six not bedrooms or six rooms mm -hmm. with six family, each of at least five kids. And we, I watched her move from there to renting a, a, a house and to buying her own home uh, in 1974 and build it out. Uh, in by 1978, and I, I, I see my mom uh, as as the ultimate businesswoman, the ultimate mother. I mean, never got no matter we, we were in tenement yard for, for, for 12 years, not 12, yeah, 12 years. And I don't remember being hungry because there's always dumpling, there's always gingerbread, there's always something in my house to eat, or you know, and me could have eaten enough, all right. So my mom, you hear Dervan say, his mom live inside of him? Let me tell you something. My mom live inside of me like nothing else. I stand up in my, my, my bedroom sometimes and or, or in front of the mirror sometimes and be looking at my mom right there and I see me a look for that's, that's, um, that's, how, that's how bad it is. So, but you know, that's when, how good it is. That is good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, so, but that, that's, 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 uh, my mom, and, and, and it's, it doesn't take Mother's Day for me to recognize of my course. mother. Go ahead, yeah. Devon, you were going to say. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. The, 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 it's, it's, it's just, the, the, it's an un, un, unbroken, um, it's, it's like the umbilical cord was never cut. Yes. <laughs> you know? Never, never. It's, yeah, that's 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 the feeling. So I can identify. I remember because I attended the the, the service. I remember. Oh, that's right. That it was, yes, so I, I know the story. <laughs> I heard all of it at the service, and it was quite something. Yes. Quite something. Yeah. Yeah. Leo, I, Leo, were you an only child? Why? Why? Or how did you get that honor of being the one to go with mom? I was the only boy, and I, I at the time I was the youngest. Right. So um, I, I have a sister, she, she's about five years old, six years older. Then I have another one who was two years older. But being the boy, only me can carry the grip on my head because mm -hmm. she would not allow her daughters to come out and carry a grip. So I went out and carried a grip on my head, you know, mm -hmm. and that brought us closer mm -hmm. because for, from 1968 to 1977, we spent very close moments together. She bought cars and I me go to that every week. You know, sometimes we allow the other girls to come and thing, but I me and her out there, she teach me to drive everything. I mean, my mom is, is my world. I'm telling you, my world. But you miserable, but you know. Uh, well, Jesus. That's where I was gonna go with that. Oh Beverly. my God. 
I know Beverly <laughs> has something to say. So I, I, I'm happy you said the miserable part. So tell us about Leo and his relationship with his mother. <laughs> The miserableness. Jesus. <laughs> Actually, interestingly enough, that's not the part that, that struck me most. Right. What struck me most was that you're you're so proud of your mom. Oh. And um and you are unabashedly proud yeah. of your mom. And you're not and uh, you own all of her. All you know, rights. it's 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 not just that she was she was great. Actually, she was great, and sometimes she's miserable too, but yes. you love all of her, and I all love that. I love that because so many times, you know, we our love for people is un, is kind of conditional. If yeah. they behave this kind of way, yes, then we love them because they were good to us. Mm -hmm. But I mean, she was your mom was good to you, but well, you yeah. you saw her in her fullness and you love all of her. Well, there's the one other, other thing. That I, that, sorry, hold your thought there. The other yeah, thing yeah. that I'd like to say is that we got much closer as she got older because, you know, oh, as a child of a pair of your parents. You don't want to talk about some things. Some things are, are are taboo and stuff. My mom was able to tell me all of our stories about her and her husband and her previous boyfriend and, and all of this. My, my mom was not afraid. She was not telling nobody else that. And me alone, she tell all of these stories. And, and I felt very, very, um, it, it, it was heartfelt to, to sit down and listen to her talk. She wasn't just your mom, she was a good friend, was, which yes. is something that's important in relationships, you know, yes. because um, sometimes, uh, I know I'm deviating just a little bit, but um, two things I wanted to say. One, I was thinking about how um, marriages that last, the people tend to be good friends. And that's Can what I support you on that? Stick up to make the Jamaican parlance, as my mother would say. Parlance. Stick up please. Uh, you are perfectly correct. There's a, a lady by the name of, she lives in Florida, Myrtle Reese, Mrs. Reese. Uh, she, she had been married. Her husband died just over a month ago, but they had been, they had been married for, a, for this year would, be, would make 65 years, 65, 65 oh. years. Oh. And I had the opportunity to interview her and, and I asked her, uh, what what what's the secret? What happened? How 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 do you stay with someone for sixty five years? And she said, she simply said, "I married my friend." Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that I was thinking about also is that mm -hmm. both of both of the gentlemen who are on right now, both of you had positive experiences with your mothers, and. I believe that that actually would would translate into your being able to relate well to women. Um, a lot of times. <laughs> okay, okay, Leo. Okay, Leo. <laughs> I mean, generally, generally speaking, generally speaking, that no, no, would no. be the result. No, no. My because best friends, my best friends are women. Don't worry. <laughs> there you go. There you go. See? No, yeah, no, I can identify. Yeah, I, I, I have a special place for for women, quite frankly, yeah. for females in general. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I don't like to see a, a, a female crying. Yeah, me too. No, I, don't, I don't like to see that. Me too. I, I don't want to see that. And I don't like to see that. And like you, uh, Leo Gilling, I was all, I, I, love fem I love female company and I enjoyed female company. Uh, well, not at high school, but primary school <laughs> that's different <laughs> no no high school because you know where we're we so anyway yes. but uh but, but <laughs> university some wonderful friends and the level of trust i value trust yes my and the young you. ladies yes. i have met in my lifetime and the amount of trust they invested in me mm -hmm. at no time at all did I ever, ever, ever do anything to betray that trust? That's and I awesome. learned it from my mother. My mother, she, she used to tell us things. She used to say, we, we were good at keeping secrets. <laughs> Very good at keeping secrets. And, and from, you know, I, everything, every experience I've ever had with a female has been nothing but good. And don't take my word for it. Just ask anybody. And again, it would have come from my socialization, right. uh, yes. which was 
which was dominated no. by my mother no. because mm -hmm. uh, my my father didn't didn't uh, after a while didn't live with us. Right. Uh, you know. So yeah. So yeah. I can identify. Yes, sure. So, Greta, I, you've known Leo for many decades. I mean, share with us, share with us, you know, based on what he just shared, the influence you think his mom had on him. Um, I think what I got from Leo, I met Leo in college, right? And one of the things that stood out for me is not his business um, savvy or anything like that. I learned about that afterwards. But one of the things that I found out was that he was an advocate for people. Um, and I think he would put himself out there to defend what is in his, in his, in his eyes um, is right. Mm -hmm. So um, he, would, he would literally be out there to be an advocate. And I think also the whole issue of trust, I have seen that with him. He talks about how his mother would, um, and I'm just saying this to him, it's the first time I'm telling him this, by the way. Um, he would talk about how his mother would go to the hotel and she would, um, she would lay the things out and the workers would come out and all of that. And she would trust the things. Yes. You know, she would yes. trust the things and yes. believe that the people would do the right thing and mm -hmm. pay them when it's paid day, yes. you know? Yes. And I yes. think I see that in Leo also, you know, where he is, um, he is going to believe you for what you are and he's going to expect that you are going to follow through with what you said you were going to do right and i think he learned that from mom you trust people until they prove that they cannot be trusted um and even with that i also have realized with him that he might have gotten this from his mother maybe in the tenement yard the sense of community you know um he does not necessarily believe in throwing you out and throwing you away just because you might do something that upset, you know, the, the apple cart or something like that. He is willing to, to believe in the sense of, you know, you might get it wrong, but we're not going that way just because, you know, and, and it, has, it has really kind of been a constant in his life that I have seen. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I, uh, the tenement yard, we used to, all of us used to cook uh, when one family does not have, and the other family has, then they, that family cook and share among everybody. Yeah. And so we were accustomed to cooking big chunks of food. So one pot of 30, 40 dumpling a night, just in case one family don't have, you know, so that's how we, and, and I'll that's tell you this, that the friends that, I, the friends that, that I had between 19, 60 and 1972 are still like the, the family to me. Still family, real family. Yeah. Well, I can tell you, for me, growing up, um, I'm one of nine and only one boy in the family. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. so my parents grew nine strong people, definitely not eight strong women, one strong man. And quite honestly, a lot of it came, yeah, my father was always that figure, but my mom was always that steady force of kindness, strength, reason, and independence in all of this. And, you know, she was always good with her hands and taught me to, I, I, my love of gardening came from my mother, not just pretty flowers, you know, but everything to sustain the family. But she was also a gatherer and a provider and to support what my father was doing. And we also had, it, it's so familiar actually to um, Ambassador Ombe Asama. When I was listening to her, I'm like, that's my story. All of that is my story. You know, my mother was or is, cause she's alive. Um, Happy Mother's Day, mom, Jamaican white. So we still had that little stigma with not having a good relationship with my, grand, my maternal grandmother and my father not getting along because my mother wasn't supposed to get married to him and all that drama and everything that followed through. And she was strong and she determined what she wanted, who she wanted and her family structure and what it was gonna look like. So we had friends growing up 
but we didn't need friends. We were each other's friends and oh, we, wow. we depended on each other and we loved each other. And even though my, my siblings and I, we're extremely close. We're extremely nice. close and yeah. So again, and it, it builds that bond um, of trust. It, it builds that bond of knowing that you can depend on each other and depend on yourself. And so, and this is what she taught us in a lot of ways that we, we're bringing um, forth now to all of our families. So th there was always that sense of community. You love each other. You take care of each other. This is your family. And going back again to, um, you know, to what Alun was saying, at one point, I was a little bit confused. I didn't know how many brothers and sisters I actually had because so many people would turn up at dinner time. I'm serious. We would have the teens, all these plates. And one of my job was to help to serve food. So when you're counting out all these plates and then you stop and you're like, there should only be <laughs> of us counting my parents, but you keep going because that cousin, that friend, somebody is turning up because they don't have, or you, you, my mother would say, okay, here, she would share something and take it to that person, take it to that person. So that sense of community and helping, I definitely, oh, um, we got that from her and we, um, yeah, we're strong right. because of her. Thank you so much. You know, it's 10 59 and we are only have one minute to wrap up the show, but I, I want to thank each and every one of you for, for this really, really wonderful experience. This is, this is more than I expected this weekend uh, on the mm -hmm. show. Um, okay. I, I want to thank Alun uh, for, for jumping in. She was so uh, gracious, really, really nice. Uh, Dervan, oh my God, it's always nice to, to share some moments with you, whether it's on my show or on your show. Or just being around each other, right? Thanks, so much. thank you so much, um, Carlene. Sure. Thank you, uh, Grethel. Thank you, Beverly, and uh, the most uh, eloquent of us all, Shernet Bailey, uh, showing off her. Um, what do you call it again? Woolmers are girls. Yeah, she's she's a, a big Who girl today. Who went to immaculate? Who went to immaculate? None of these. None of these. None of, sorry. Right. I'm so sorry. Well, for what it's worth, for what it's worth, Shernet, my first girlfriend uh, <laughs> went to Immaculate. Oh, thank you. And uh, she made such an impression on me that I have a very high regard for Immaculate uh, uh, past students. Oh, oh well, that's fantastic. <laughs> I, 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 and, and I think I, I'm. I think I'm caught in a. I think I'm cutting a cycle, Dervan, because most of the women that work very close to me are immaculate, and I didn't choose them because they're immaculate. But there's some, there's some kind of draw somewhere, some kind of magnet somewhere. I'm, I'm getting my best friend is immaculate. My second best friend is immaculate. Oh, All of these ladies, and uh, I'm not calling any name. Because <laughs> she's like. I oh, so friend. by the way, just so you know that I am from, Me I go to, I went to Meadowbrook. I mean, I mean, no, no, no. I mean, our best friend is Meadowbrook. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. You're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, Shernet, Shernet, um, all right, guys, thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day. Mother. It was a fabulous Mother's Day. Um, uh, thank you, everybody. Have a thank wonderful you. day. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 <laughs>